Finally tonight, we return to an issue raised by the focus on Mitt Romney's taxes, how he made his money, as the head of a so-called private equity firm. Those firms invest in other companies, often troubled ones, and try to turn them around. But there's great debate over whether private equity activity is more focused on short-term profits or the long-term health of the company. We have our own debate about that with Stuart Cole. He's co-CEO of the Riverside Company, a private equity firm that manages more than $3 billion in assets. And Josh Cosman, the author of the book, The Buyout of America, how private equity is destroying jobs and killing the American economy. We thank you both for being with us. Josh Cosman, just so that we understand what we're talking about here, how big a role does private equity play in the U.S. economy? Uh, private equity firms own companies employing about one out of every 10 Americans. So they are hugely important. They're America's biggest employers. And uh, up until recently, they've been largely ignored. And Judy, just, just one thing that I maybe to jump in and say, I think it's a fallacy, and it's what the Mitt Romney defenders are trying to throw up in the air. The private equity firms buy troubled companies. They're almost always buying profitable businesses, not troubled businesses. Well, that, that'll be part of the question that I ask uh, uh, Stuart Cole now, because let's, let's get a, have a basic understanding of what private equity is about. It's a group of outside investors who put their money together, borrow a lot of money, buy a company, then try to make that com company profitable, sell it, so that they then can make a profit. Is that fair, Stuart Cole? Uh, it is, uh, Judy. We collect money from pension funds and endowments for colleges and, uh, and foundations and the like. And uh, firms like the Riverside Company invest that uh, into, as, as Josh says, uh, mostly healthy companies with uh, the objective of making those companies uh, bigger and better over an extended period of time so that the companies become more valuable, so that they can be sold then uh, eventually for a higher price, which allows us to uh, generate uh, attractive returns uh, for those colleges, uh, universities, foundations, and the like. But you agree it's mostly healthy companies that, that are invested in? Yes, there's a, a subset, a segment of private equity that focuses on troubled companies, uh, companies that are struggling. Uh, I have a lot of respect for those firms. That's, that's hard work, and, and it is not something that the Riverside Company does, but it is a, a small but important part of private equity. So, Josh Cosman, you have a, a problem. You're critical of the way most, if not all, private equity operates. Why? Well, most. And, and I have a lot of respect for, for Stewart's firm, which mostly buys companies not with a tremendous amount of leverage. And really, the only way Stewart's firm makes money is by growing the businesses because they traditionally have bought relatively small businesses. But the way mainstream private equity works, which includes Bain Capital, is they buy companies by putting them in deep debt. And then the record shows, I did two years of full-time investigative work on my book, um, that they don't improve the businesses. 52% uh, of the companies acquired in the 25 biggest buyouts of the 90s ended up going bankrupt. I looked at the 10 biggest buyouts of the 1990s, so I wasn't cherry picking. In six of the 10 cases, it's clear that the company would have been better off if they had never been acquired. In three cases, it was mixed. In one case, the PE firm did improve the business. And this decade, uh, Moody's came out with a report just last month that showed that in the 40 biggest leverage buyouts that all occurred in kind of 05, 06, 07, 08, um, that those companies were, had grown revenue since being acquired by 4%, while their strategic peers, their, their, their peers, had grown revenue 14%. Well, so let me, to me, there's, go ahead. I was just going to say, let me break in now, if, if I may, and ask Stuart Cole, if given that picture that, that we just heard painted, it sounds like these private equity firms are destroying more than they're building up. Uh, I disagree, uh, and here's why. Uh, private equity uh, relies on its ability to attract capital, again, from these uh, pension funds uh, and others. And uh, to attract that capital, it needs to generate good returns. To generate good returns, it needs to invest in companies that grow and prosper. And that is, uh, is overwhelmingly what private equity has achieved uh, over the several decades that it's been around. Uh, we went through a very difficult period uh, after 2007, uh, the global financial crisis, the resulting uh, recession, the worst since the Great Depression. 
And uh, surely some private equity done transactions struggled. Surely some public companies and privately held companies struggled as well. But overall, uh, private equity wouldn't be uh, continuing to attract the capital that attracts if it wasn't able to generate consistently good returns, which it does uh, really in one way, which is by making the companies that it invests in bigger and better. So, Josh Cosman, if that's the case, and that doesn't sound like it squares with what you were saying, how do you square that? And what does all this mean for jobs? Um, I think that, you know, for Bain, 22% of the money they invested in funds raised from 87 to 95 during the time Mitt was there um, were in companies in which they made, Bain and their investors, made $578 million, the bulk of their profits, and all those companies ended up going bankrupt. Unfortunately, when you buy a sizable company and load it up with debt, um, and then take money out, have the company, after you raise earnings in the short term through cuts, borrow money and pay yourself dividends uh, in the short term uh, and set up those companies for failure, they can fail and you can still make a lot of money. Um, Stuart the Cole? World Economic Forum. Yeah, let me bring in Stuart Cole on, the, on sure. that point about the, the short term turnaround, the pressure on these companies to, to make a profit and the investors get out. Uh, the, the investment that private equity firms make, make in is, is, of course, equity. It is the last claim on the cash flow and earnings and value of the company. In order for that uh, equity to be valuable, the company needs to succeed. It needs to be able to uh, service and, and, over time, retire its debt. Um, the amount of debt a company borrows is a function of the uh, uh, profitability of the company and the, uh, where we are in the cycle and the willingness of banks to lend. Uh, surely there are periods when banks will lend uh, higher amounts and, and lower amounts, and there's uh, sometimes uh, serious situations such as we saw in 2008, 2009, when companies that had performed splendidly in 2005, 6, and 7 struggled, and the amounts that they borrowed in those periods then looked high. Uh, those companies worked hard to, uh, to, to become uh, successful again. The private equity businesses that uh, invested in them worked uh, equally hard uh, to make those companies successful because if they weren't able to do that, uh, they would not be able to raise their next fund. But it so sounds I, like, I was again, just going to say, this sounds like you're painting a picture of a healthy set of uh, transactions, whereas, uh, Josh Cosman, you're painting something very different. What, are we, what am I missing here? Josh Cosman? I don't think, you know, in my view, um, the facts don't justify what Stewart is saying, with all due respect to Stewart. Um, what private equity defenders now are doing is throwing out a lot of nice terms. We build businesses, but not a lot of facts behind it. A private equity firm returns, according to several ac good academic studies, are no better than the S&P 500. And if we look at Bain, which has gotten the most scrutiny lately, uh, four of Bain's ten biggest investments under Mitt Romney ended up going bankrupt, and yet Bain made a lot of money. So uh, I think there's very little evidence that for the big, large private equity firms that they build any value in their businesses. You get the last word, Stuart Cole, uh, to, uh, to bring us around to your, to your argument and how you see this. Yeah, I mean, I'm reticent to, to talk about Bain. I'm not an investor in Bain. I'm not familiar enough uh, with their results. Although I will say that Bain has been able to continue to attract capital, which would lead, lead me to believe that uh, most of their transactions have worked well enough. At Riverside, that has certainly been the case. And, and I'm uh, very proud of the, the hard work uh, that uh, my colleagues have done to help us build companies uh, uh, that have added jobs. In the last two years alone, we've added uh, almost 1,500 jobs. That's about a 15% increase in the employment of the companies that we've invested in in North America. And as, if, we, if we looked at the companies that we have invested in, whether it's a crisis prevention institute uh, in Milwaukee or uh, Smart Comp in, in Washington, Pennsylvania, these are, are growing profitable companies uh, that are, have benefited, I think, um, greatly uh, from private equity. And I think if you asked uh, their, their, uh, their founders, their, their uh, managers, people like uh, David and Shannon, uh, they would they would agree we are going to have to leave it there it's a big subject and we are going to continue to look at it no doubt uh, in the days and weeks to come Stuart Cole Josh Cosman we thank you both